Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge here on the internet. Alright, today's video is Germany Could Not Win World War II by Potential History. Uh, this video was uh, chosen um, by uh, the Patreon pledgers. Um, this video won out narrowly, um, so it was chosen by them. If this is something you'd like to participate to, all Patreon pledgers, no matter what tier level, um, get to participate in polls uh, for videos that get... Uh, kind of fast-tracked onto this channel here. So this sounds like an interesting topic. Um, Germany could not win World War II. It's a, it's a question I've kind of seen popped up in um, during, you know, either live premieres or live streams or on the Discord. Just kind of a, like, could Germany have, have won the war? Like, or were they destined to lose? So I'm interested to see what they kind of bring up here um, and maybe give my perspective on it. Um, uh, these types of questions, I think, are really interesting um, to think about. Not necessarily what would change history, but um, just to, I guess I guess just lessons in there in general. Okay. All right. Well, with that, if you like the original video, make sure you go and uh, like and subscribe down below because a link to the original video will be down there. Be sure to give Potential History your support if you like this video. If you would like to join me on my kind of continued journey for history um, on YouTube, love to have you as a subscriber as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Germany could not win World War II. Always start with Futurama. Awesome. I finished fine-tuning my what-if machine. It can answer any what-if question accurate to within Great one show, tenth of a plausibility on. unit. Who wants the machine to show them an alternate reality? Oh, oh, I want to know if Germany wins if Hitler stops making decisions. <laughs> a question for the what if machine i have one do they win if they mars produce the mouse tank hey, what do you say win if they mars produce the mouse tank okay make that machine show me what would happen if they took moscow all right they took moscow still just russia over and over People love rooting for the underdog. These stories strike a chord with us at a very basic level, and you can tell this by how popular these stories are in media. This also translates to real-world stories, although real life does not have a plot that always turns in the underdog's favor. So there's this kind of romanticism connected to fighting for a lost he's cause that a lot of people assign to a lot of real-world groups. Oh, he's down. One of these you see talked about a lot is the German army in World War II, that if only dumb Hitler hadn't been in charge, or if different choices were made, that the war would have turned out different. And a lot of these arguments seem to hold water on the surface, but upon reflection, mostly miss the point or do not make a significant enough change to sway anything. So is the original question here specifically about Hitler? Um, Hitler could not win World War II, or sorry, Germany could not win World War II because of Hitler? Hopefully get some clarity there. These are my favorite how Germany could have won scenarios and how they're wrong. Just, just take my um, that's actually a good question too. I don't know if they'll they'll get to it too, but a question I've heard is, um, could Germany have won World War II even if the Americans had not joined? Right? That would be a good question to talk about too. I hear this one all the time, that if the Germans had just driven onto Moscow and taken it, the Russians would have capitulated. But it is rarely backed up with evidence as to why. Even in the memoirs of German give generals after the war, they constantly mention that the drive to Moscow would have meant victory in the east. And I think the reason for this is that they model the Russian campaign after the French campaign. Yeah, French if you take Paris, right, that's the, the, the thing they said. If you take Paris, France falls, which kind of happens. Um, but that might be a false equivalence, uh, um, equivalency there. French campaign in 1940, the French surrender once Paris is cut off from its forces and looks like it's about to fall. Using this model, a lot of people think that the exact same would apply to Russia. The only problem with this is Russia is a whole different animal both politically and geographically. True. Stalin was going to put every man, woman, and child in the Soviet Union between him and the advancing Germans. And this is exemplified France by the not. way the Red Army fought the war, often trading casualties for time. So if Moscow was taken, sure, it's a political and also logistical defeat, given that the rail network was centered around it. But no way do I think Stalin is just going to shrug and say, well, we tried. After I would agree. 
I, I'm sorry, he's finishing his point there, but this is something I would agree with. France and Russia are very, very different um, in so many reasons. But yeah, the, I mean, Stalin, just uh, Stalin himself, rather than, you know, Charles de Gaulle or somebody in the West, it's going to be a very different um, scenario with, with Stalin. I mean, we already saw what he was willing to do with uh, casualties and lives. Like he was saying, uh, the, the price of time versus lives was something... Stalin was um, had no issue with, had no um, issue dealing with. After Moscow was taken. And with that, we would probably see the Soviet Union fighting to the bitter end, just like the Germans did in reality. This is also backed up by real-world history from Napoleon's Russia campaign in 1812, where he went on to take Moscow but still lost the war. Russia is such a large and vast country that they have the ability to trade casualties and land at a higher rate than any other country can. Oh, and yeah. therefore, the normal rules of war, such as taking the capital and ensuring victory, do not apply. Are they not seeing this? Okay, so they're going points of why they couldn't win the war. Um, taking Moscow, so basically taking Moscow would not have ensured a victory. I would agree with that for sure. Hitler should have listened to his generals. And that is why they couldn't win, because he didn't listen to his generals. Okay, I see, I see what you're saying. Another commonly heard point is that Hitler made terrible decisions and he should have just listened to his generals. Now, I'm not here to defend Adolf Hitler. He's a crazy genocidal maniac. Let's not make two ways about it. But this isn't always the case. For example, Hitler and the High Command were all in agreement on invading Russia. They all very much wanted to, in their eyes, destroy communism and save Germany, as Hitler laid out in his book. But once this effort was undertaken, Hitler and his generals began to disagree at times on what moves needed to be made. Sure. And once the war is over... Boy gets fired for inventing a destructible drone. Many generals in their memoirs begin to claim <laughs> that Hitler made all the bad decisions, and that if he had just listened to them, the war would have been won. Nah. And one example Overst of this I already hinted at in the former point. Overstated. Hitler's generals were convinced that taking Moscow would end the war for many erroneous reasons I listed previously. For Hitler, Moscow was a general direction in which to head, but was not the final objective. For him, the resources in the Ukraine and the She'll oil fields to. beyond yeah. were a much more important target. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I don't, and I don't think Paris, like going back to the Paris thing, I don't think Paris is or sorry uh moscow is important to russia as paris probably was to france um most because so many of the industrial centers like they're saying was in the west right in in, in the western um part of the soviet union like the ukraine for example and then also down south where you're going to get oil fields and stuff it has a huge economic importance um france is completely built around uh paris right um so not to say that like Moscow is not important. It's it's incredibly important, and it's the administrative center of things. But yeah, I would agree with I would agree kind of with what they're um, saying. And that actually goes back to the other point too. So, um, so his, so Hitler, they're kind of saying Hitler was actually right on that one. Actually, right to not listen to the advisors that taking Moscow would just make Russia fall. Um, I actually agree with. Um, uh, what Hitler's thinking here. And given Germany's oil shortages, this is a good example of where Hitler was right and his generals were wrong. And actually, a lot of Hitler's so-called mistakes start to make a whole lot more sense once you put it into the context of Germany's fuel shortages. And if you want more information on this, Tick did an excellent video on Germany's oil problem that you should really check out. Another example of this sentiment being wrong is Operation Citadel. And um, oil... It was such uh, a, an issue for Germany, but especially Japan, too, because they had the huge navy and not nearly enough um, oil reserves. Both have just the mil militaries that they can't fuel on their own. They can't. And those oil fields in the Western Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, kind of Southeastern Europe there, um, were so vital. And for Japan going down to like the Philippines and other parts of, or, and parts of Southeast Asia for oil. Um, that right there could be a reason why Germany couldn't win World War II is the resources. They couldn't, especially if you're fighting the, a giant coalition of nations like they were. And same with Japan. By the way, sorry for this. I got this shad, this this light coming through my window. Don't worry, it's not your camera or it's not your screen. It's not your camera. It's just light shitting upon me. <laughs> well, 1943. 
Hitler's generals convinced him that an attack on the Kursk bulge would cripple the Red Army and renew Germany's initiative in the war. Hitler saw this plan as very flawed, though, famously saying, Every time I think about Operation Citadel, my stomach turns over. And seeing how poorly this turned out for the Germans, his premonition was nearly correct. Now, if this was the caricature of Hitler always overriding his generals that is commonly seen, Citadel would have been called off before it was launched. Now, these are just two quick examples, and yes, there are times, especially... They also kind of had to do that, though, at that time of the war, though. I mean, they were already... Like, they had to have some kind of big offensive in in contrast to what was happening. Otherwise, all they would do is just sit and sit and just lose, 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 right? It's kind of like the last, maybe big, last-ditch effort. Later in the war, where Hitler overrules his generals with poor decisions, the Battle of the Bulge comes to mind. But early in the war, when these decisions really count, Hitler is many times making the right decisions when overruling his generals or going along with them in agreement of a common goal. So, Hitler should have just listened to his generals and he would have won the war, is a moot point. Because many times he did, and his generals were wrong, and many times he didn't, and he turned out to be right. It's all Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler. Just more stuff. Okay, so... That can't... The, Germany could not win because Hitler didn't listen to his generals. That, that doesn't work. That point doesn't work. Um, because... As you can see, there were things he was right about that they were wrong about, and then things they were wrong and Hitler was right about. So that's that's a wash right there. That that I don't think that could support either side of that argument, personally. This is actually a point I used to subscribe to. A very honest critique of the German war economy is that it was not on the right footing. And people make this argument mean? usually saying things like, Germany should have just made more Panzer IVs instead of pouring resources into the Tiger. Or Germany should have built the Luftwaffe back up so they could regain air superiority. And I will can't give you just the German that. war economy. You can't just just do that. It's <laughs> it's like when people say, "Man, you're poor. Why don't, you, why don't what, a country's poor? Why don't they just like print more money?" Well, you can't just do that. It's not possible, right? You're you're limited. There are things outside of your control. Economy in many places was an absolute nightmare. John Parshall does an excellent lecture on tank production in World War II and real. What's that say? Hold on. Quantity, 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 high quality components, low quality components, high quality components. Okay, are these just, is this slide they're doing just tanks? Horizontal organization, uh, organization, vertical organization. Yeah, if you look at um, uh, vertical versus um, horizontal economic development, um, you'll um, look into that. You'll, you'll see more about that. That was something I used to talk about a lot during the Industrial Revolution, my Industrial Revolution lessons. Or, I mean, I still do, but. Especially when I was talking about, um, when I was teaching American history. We got few models, long runs, few models, long runs, many probably models, short runs. So they didn't stick. They're saying the Germans didn't stick with their good models. They had too many models. I mean, there can be reasons for that, though. Semi are unskilled labor, semi highly specialized labor. I mean, the Germans were incredible engineers. All right really highlights how backwards the German production process was for armored vehicle manufacturing and mentions how that let's let's look at this graph again okay so this is vehicle production so Germany's way down there okay backwards the German so you can see here um, the, the Germans... John Parshall does an excellent lecture on tank production in World War II and really highlights how bad... Okay, so you can see the German and British production is pretty similar there. So if this was just a war, if you're talking about, about production of resources, if this is just a war between Germany and Britain, that could be a different story. But the fact that America and Russia are involved and completely outproduce the Germans... I mean, that's 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 a case right there that Germany couldn't win resource wise. Can't do all three. I mean, maybe not even just the Americans or just the, the Russians. If it was just the British, then yeah. Backwards, the German production process was for armored vehicle manufacturing. That's impressive. Look at the, the Russian production. Um, eventually outproduced the Americans. It mentions how that. Not but I mean, they did say, though, that the, the Russian stuff was lesser quality, though. Knowledge can be applied to other types of war manufacturing. And although once Spear takes over, production is streamlined to a degree, and munitions and weapons production goes up year by year, it's not near where it needs to be to fight this attritional war. 
So obviously the solution... I love the camouflage. Here. It's not near where Hold it on. needs to be to fight this attritional war. Nope. No tank No tank there. No tank there. <laughs> Move along. So obviously the solution is to just streamline production, sort of how you see in the American model, and this would have given Germany a better chance in the war. Although this is a good criticism, it misses the core issue. The biggest thing Germany was running low on from 1942 Fuel. onward is, as I mentioned before, oil. And larger numbers of tanks and planes wouldn't yeah. be any good if there was no fuel to run them. Very true. Also, Germany was having manpower shortages as early as 1942 or 43, and along with fuel to run these machines, you need people to crew them. So they can outproduce, because the, the, the engineering is so strong, their production is so incredible in Germany. They can outproduce their population and their fuel reserves, so... Doesn't matter. Like he's saying, doesn't doesn't matter. These are just two issues that cannot be remedied by streamlining production. At a certain point, Germany is just going to be out of oil and out of men, and no amount of additional tanks or planes would operationally be possible. What's the matter? Run out of gas? Kinda embarrassing. Just coordinate with Japan. The thing is, though, like, okay, how do you? I mean, right away, how do you even coordinate? You're on different sides of the planet. I mean, yeah, you only have Russia between the two of you. Um, but the coordinating, I don't know how much coordination you could honestly do. That's just my initial thoughts, but let's see what he says. This is another point that deceptively seems to make a lot of sense, as Germany was crushed by a two-front war. It stands to reason that if Japan and Germany, through their alliance, had coordinated an attack on Russia, they would have won. And that may honestly be true. A big boost to the defense of Moscow came after Russian troops from Siberia were sent west after the Russo-Japanese non-aggression pact. The yeah, okay, so Russo-Japanese War. I mean, the Japanese have already shown in somewhat recent history um, that they can beat the Russians. It did substantially in the Russo-Japanese War, but what... I'm just trying to think. I, you're thinking there. Germany has way more to gain from an alliance with Japan than Japan does with Germany because Japan's focus is on Asia, not, not Russia, especially, I mean, Eastern Russia. Who cares? Um they had already gotten what they need from from the east. Um, there was nothing really more I could think that the the, the Japan, Japanese would get that would be of more value than their other interests in in the eastern hemisphere. So, all right. The only problem with this is that coordination did not and was never going to happen. Germany and Japan were allies by circumstance and shared no real common goals with each other. And in fact, they're operating in opposition to each other at times. German training of Chinese troops in the 30s as they were fighting the Japanese is a direct example of this. In short, neither side was going to stick out its neck for the other. In fact, Russia as a common enemy was probably the only yeah, instance in which they would have, and even then they did not. I really care about the each other. The reason for Japan not wanting to do this is mostly colored by the Japanese experience against the Soviets at the Battle of Konkangol, please forgive my pronunciation, where the Red Army gave the Imperial Army a very bloody nose in an undeclared border conflict. This incident convinced the Japanese to not go through with any action that would provoke the Soviet Union as they did not want war with them since they were already fighting China and would soon be fighting the United States. This avoidance of provoking the Soviet Union went far enough that during the war in the Pacific between Japan and the United States, the Japanese refused to sink any U.S. merchant ships headed to the Soviet Union. So, the Japanese attacking the Soviet Union directly flies in the face of the intentions and characteristics of the Japanese High Command to the point where it strays out of potential history kill yourself into the realm of fantasy Whoa. you have screwed me again japan okay so yeah just make make an alliance there it, it, i mean they did that that was probably the best the alliance that uh, the best that alliance could have been there so that doesn't help yeah that wouldn't help J there's no way japan would give more help or yeah care about it more wonder what yeah, wonder this is my favorite one if they had just made, insert ridiculous design here, the war may have they gone did plenty of that. And it's the idea that this thing, or this thing, or this thing, would somehow have single-handedly lengthened the war. And there are a few fan favorites for picks of these. The one I see most often being the mouse, the ridiculous 200-ton behemoth that in reality would have been awesome target practice for allied fighter bombers and something for <laughs> allied soldiers to gawk at once it had run out of fuel and had to be abandoned. But remember, they can't fuel those things. Too much fuel... One of those would need, at a, at, a, at a time, especially when they don't have it, be useless. Yeah, it'd be cool, I guess, for them, and useful potentially if you had the resources, but it's not useful. The toy without the batteries. 
or German jet aircraft that, although cutting edge and superior to what the Allies had, still couldn't have been applied in a large scale due to the aforementioned fuel and personnel problems. And the list for these things goes on and on. A personal pet peeve of mine in this category is the what-if question about the German atomic program and the sure. claim that if they had applied themselves, the Germans could have come up with an atomic weapon first. This notion, though, just like that of Japan invading Russia, very quickly falls into the category of fantasy once looked at for three main reasons. One, many of Germany's... All right, hold on. I, I, I want to hear this, but yeah, I really want to hear this, this, this reasons. Because people talk about what if, what if Germany had the atomic bomb... Right? Um, like, would they would would Adolf Hitler have used it? That's been a, a big uh, discussion question. But the more important question is: is could they have had a bomb, or at least could they have had one before anyone else did? I'm hoping that's what he kind of addresses here. Story of fantasy, once looked at Come for back three main reasons. Here. One, many of Germany's top scientists were expelled in the 30s for being Jewish, automatically limiting. Einstein, <laughs> right? They lost, yeah, they lost their brightest minds to that. Good point. German atomic capabilities. And actually, many of these scientists went on to work in the American nuclear program. So to make this win scenario work, you automatically have to make the Nazis tolerant of Jews, which is not going to happen. Two, the German atomic program is all but canceled by 1942. As Speer put it, we got the view that the development was very much at the beginning. The physicists themselves didn't want to put much into it, which were works into my third point that okay maybe they'll say in the third point but uh, um so i i, I need to i need to learn more about what the german progress on an atomic bomb would have been like because I, I was not really sure um the, of the specifics but are they saying they're basically it's 42 he said they they did they give up though because i mean this is the scientists give up because they just didn't think it was possible did they give up because they didn't think it would be useful, like it would actually work, um, or yeah, be worth the money, be worth their time? I would like to know a little bit more about that. If you if you have any info about that, I'd love to hear it. Um, why specifically did the Germans give up on their atomic program? All right, let's continue. But it looks like we got a uh, another ad coming in. The physicists themselves didn't want to put much into it. Which works into my third point, that Hitler saw atomic science as Jewish. Are you tired of the media spinning the truth and pushing false narratives? Well, take a look at this. <laughs> Over the last three years, nice. Jewish science, and pointed the okay. focus of... Which works into my third point, here. that Hitler saw atomic science as Jewish science, and pointed the focus of German development towards conventional weapons. So we're not even talking okay. about an atomic race between the U.S. Well, and Germany, as it was barely being pursued by the Germans. And to give a what-if scenario about it would fly directly in the face of what Hitler stood for. Well, I'm more interested, though, in, okay, if Hitler thought it would be useful. Because, I mean, I, I, are they trying to say that hit, if Hitler had an atomic bomb, he would not have been interested in it? Like, if, if it happened. If the scientists had continued, right? Because I'm actually more interested to know why did their science industry give up on it because that's kind of the point he was making earlier not necessarily that hitler killed the program because are they that again but and then saying because it would have been a, a, a jewish production um are we saying that if he had it he would not have used it because that i know i don't know about that hmm. um love to hear your thoughts um you can put them in youtube comments um, a great discussion, uh, much better if you want more of a discussion, would be to join our Discord server. If you have not joined our Discord server, um, there's a link down below. Um, our World War II channel in there is very, very active. Um, so I'd love to hear some opinions on that. And this gets into the bigger problem with this question, that even if Germany does produce these wonder weapons and extends the war, it's only going to extend it long enough to be the first country to get nuked due to the Germany first policy of the Allies. Are you making this jet plane? Hmm? Or a remote control that can turn you into super soldier? Hmm? Hmm? Or is it just another dumb tank? Okay, we'll let it kind of figure out here. But um, what, I mean, okay, other than atomic weaponry, what could, what is a feasible wonder weapon, though? A, 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 an efficient, effective one 
given the resources that they had. We already talked about the, the fuel sor- shortage, so that already hurts the ideas of tanks and some of these uh, uh, aircraft that they were talking about. What could there have possibly been, and again, outside of atomic weaponry, that could have actually been useful? Now, these are just a handful of points that people bring up when talking about how Germany could have won, but there are many more that I didn't go into that are equally baseless, such as the Germans should have and could have invaded England, even though the Kriegsmarine would not be able to support a large amphibious attack, and the much larger Royal Navy would have probably sunk the invading force before it even reached the shores. I've, I've heard that just recently discussed. I think I saw a video pop on my feed about, like, why didn't they just invade anyways? Um... I mean, the whole Blitzkrieg approach required the air, you know, to soften up defenses with the air raids first. And if, I mean, if the Germans can't win the air, the air war, they're not going to win the naval battle, right? Or that Barbarossa should have taken place earlier, even though it wasn't really the winter or the rainy season that stopped the Germans. It was a lack of supplies that needed to be brought up. For more info on that, check out this lecture by David Stahill. Well, what, okay. Barbarossa, the invasion of Russia, should it have been, though, the, I mean, okay, if they'd done it earlier so they wouldn't get the Russian winter. I mean, the Russian winter was hard on them, but it may not have mattered anyways, right? Should the question have been, what What about just not invading Russia? Would that really be a win of the war? I mean, would you really consider it? part of the the war then if they didn't what if they what if what if hitler just kept the agreement with stalin what if he just kept the the non-aggression pact and never had done that um that'd be that should be a question there is would would could would germany have won that war if they didn't invade russia i think that's a far more sensible question um feel free to talk about that too You'll see people bringing up scenario after scenario that bends reality and character motivations very widely to craft a scenario that Germany could win. But here's my point. Germany would not have won World War II no matter what way you slice it. The fact of the matter is... To add to that, we ha- we would have to define what winning is, right? What is a win? What does a win look like? A lot of times people don't define what that is in wars. What does a win look like? Because a win can look like a lot of things. Okay? And a lot of it depends on if you're defending or attacking, that sort of thing. So what does a win look like? Does Germany have to defeat Russia for that to be considered a win? Because they've, before then, okay, taken care of north of them and west of them, and Italy's a, an ally down to the south. So would that have been a win right there? A Russia, or they don't invade Russia. Maybe they don't even invade Britain, right? Or they don't they don't invade uh, Russia and then go back to Britain, right? Could could Germany have had success? That's another question. Without the Russia, could could Germany have still taken over the British? These are all other questions I haven't heard. But winning, I think winning has to be defined. What is a win? This is a country that is too small and too short on resources to take on the three largest world powers at once, especially given the erroneous actions and motivations they have. Basically, the Germans dealt themselves a bad hand and played it poorly. And the only way that's going to change is if they you bend time poorly? and space to their liking with the benefit of 20... 20- Did they play it poorly, though? Or was the way the game was let out not winnable? You know what I mean? Did they do the best with what they had? But was winning never an option, yeah. 20 hindsight. All things that are not going to happen in reality. Alright. Um... There's a part two. Germany could not win World War II. Part two. Um, interesting. I might have to, to, to check that out sometime. Let me know. Um, I can put that in a poll. Um, I could put that in the uh, in a future um, Patreon poll if that is something people want to see, if it's worth it or should go to, to other things. Okay, overall, um, 
I, I, I hope it's not lame that I'm in agreement with what um, they're saying there. But yeah, there. I mean, there was a few things maybe I I, per, I could perceive differently, um, like what is a win? What should we consider a win, right? And what is a win for Germany? Does it have to be all of the things that they attempted, right? And what if they had never attempted those things? But yeah, I think I'm more on the side that Germany could not necessarily win that based off of what it seemed their objectives were that they showed, what the, the goals that they showed. Based on that, yeah, probably not. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna accompany this video with a poll, um, so look out for that. Um, basically, could Germany win World War II? And I'd like to just get some quick data on what you guys think about that. Um, and in the comments there, you can definitely um, uh, make your case or whatever um, it, you could explain. If you would like a, a dialogue, then like I said before earlier. Um, please join our Discord server. It's a great way to talk with other history people and just be part of a, a good community there. But that uh, link to that is down below. All right. But yeah, I think I gave my opinions there throughout the video. Um, if you like the original video, if you have not, give them, them a like and the view. Make sure you do that. If you have not subscribed to the channel, um, their channel, make sure you do that. Description will have the original video there. Um, like I said before, this video was voted on by the patron pledgers for our channel here. If this is something you'd like to get involved in, patron pledges start at a dollar a month and it gives you access to, um, to those polls. Um, and then also uh, gets you can get ac uh, increased access or, or abilities or whatever on Discord. There's um, some perks um, involved in that. It's a great way to support the channel, but I really do appreciate that um, if you would like to. Love to have you as a subscriber to my channel as well and just continue on with me and we learn more about history. Um, we can kind of do it together because it is so important and we should definitely be taking it seriously. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and end the video here today. I'm sure this is going to strike up a whole bunch of conversations. Let's keep them respectful. Let's keep them um, factually based and not emotionally based. And I think we could do some good things with this. All right, with that, we'll see you soon. Bye.